Today, I believe we have quite an interesting one. It's job number 11704, and it's a faulty Xbox Series X that doesn't have any power. I have the board here. Now, this is actually the top board of the Series X. There are two boards that are sandwiched together, and we've managed to actually work out that the bottom board is absolutely fine, which is where you have the HDMI port. The top board isn't. It has a short on the 12 volt line. We also have another issue with this board, and that is this little Nexus connector down here. So this is clearly an issue, as well as the fact we have no power. Originally, when it came in, we thought that this might be the sole issue, but the customer has stated that they have tried to turn the console on with the Xbox controller instead of the actual power button itself, which would essentially rule this out. This is the power connector for the 12 volt line on that top board. And if I take my multimeter, which is in continuity mode, I place one probe on ground, and this is the positive pin. You can hear the beat. Same with this one. This, this pin here is ground, this one on the right, so that's ground. This one on the left is the positive 12 volt in and this is shorted to ground. What I've done already is hooked a wire up and we're gonna inject some voltage to see if we can locate where the short is. I don't actually know if the, uh, the, the equipment we're using is gonna be good enough to be able to show you where the short is, but if I inject uh, one, I'm gonna go for one volt with three amps. Even though it's a 12 volt line, we wanna start at the lowest voltage uh, we possibly can and then scale up if need be, if we're not getting any signs of it on the board. Just because it's a 12 volt line doesn't mean that you can go and directly inject 12 volts. And I'm gonna press the button now and we should see a little heat spot. And we are currently drawing uh, 0.5 volts at three amps. If I go over to the scope, I'll show you where on the board this is happening. And it's just over here. We've got what seems to be a MOSFET along with two capacitors. Now, if I go ahead and drop some isopropyl alcohol around the area, let's see what component gets hot first, shall we? I think it might actually be best to put the ring light on for this, just to show the glare so we can see where the, uh, where the alcohol is evaporating. And it looks like it's this cap. If I just put some more alcohol on it. Oh, it could be this one as well. Okay, that's not good. So we have the MOSFET here. The main source of the heat was actually coming from the MOSFET, but isopropyl alcohol is our friend when it comes to trying to locate a very, very hot component because it evaporates the isopropyl alcohol. And I think, again, this cap looks like it's drying up the alcohol quicker. I'm gonna be a bit naughty. I'm gonna put up to five amps. This should increase the amount of heat that is generated, in which case, maybe it'll help us. And again, you see this cap is getting hot. This MOSFET isn't at the moment, but this cap is absorbing up that alcohol. So I'm gonna start by removing this cap. I will measure the MOSFET as well. Let me turn off the heat and just dry up while we've got the alcohol. All right, so out of interest, I've got my multimeter set into diode mode where we're gonna put the red probe on ground and then we're gonna use the black probe to prod about. I'm just gonna check, let me zoom in a bit better. I'm just gonna check the gate on this MOSFET just here. What do we get? We have a, it is, I think it is the MOSFET. If I'm being 100% honest with you, because we have a reading of zero and this is the gate. So I think the MOSFET is actually faulty. If I'm being 100% honest with you, I think it's dragging everything down. I could remove the MOSFET. I'm just going to remove this cap and then I'm going to measure the MOSFET again. Cause I'm pretty sure you can measure a MOSFET in circuit. Like, you know how on like the Xbox One S consoles, you can measure it in diode mode anyway. I'm just going to remove this cap. Just see if that makes any difference. These boards are very thick. Put it on that pad so I don't lose it. And so it's a lot easier to put back. Okay, so now that's off. I'm gonna go to diode mode and just measure the same place where I did before to see if that cap was the issue. I doubt it. I actually think it might be the actual FET itself. Ah, we get a diode reading now, 0.5. So our short is gone. Okay, so what's that cap that was dragging down the circuit? Let me just, I just need to triple check and make sure that uh, on the 12 volt rail as well, that the short is gone. So meter in continuity mode, it will be. Okay, there we go. Yeah, no short, no beep on continuity mode. You can see that I'm touching the uh, the 12 volt just here and here. Here we have ground, so you should hear a beep in a second. There you go, hear a beep. But here, no beep. I think we've solved the short. That's really, really good. Just one little capacitor. There we go. What's good about this as well is that I don't think we actually need to replace this cap purely because of the fact we have one in circuit right here. So that's really good news. I will test it just to make sure that the console now turns on. We can just use the Xbox controller to make sure. And we've actually got some Nexus connectors on order 
um, and they're not here until the weekend. So once they come as well, I can get this replaced. We should have a fully working Xbox Series X. I'll continue this video when we have the Nexus connector in stock. So I'll see you then. Just to show as well that whilst the cap is off the board and not in circuit, that I don't know if you can hear, but that is our cap shorted. Bad cap, naughty cap. I have returned earlier than expected, actually. They were meant to come at the weekend. They've come like three days early, which is a result. Good news. I have the connector here, the Nexus connector that we need and the Xbox motherboard. So let's replace it now. Here we have that Nexus connector. Can apply a little bit of flux. The board is very warm. Had it on a heater. It'll be on the sides as well. Okay. okay, I'm applying heat from the underside of the board now. There we go. You see we have a couple of pins left on here. Has that ripped a trace as well? I believe it has. Oh, the trace might still be there just. I'm just going to give it a clean. Just see if it hangs in there or not. I'll need to check over that in a second and make sure it's okay. I'm giving it a good scrub and it's not coming off, which might be a good sign. Let's just make sure we got continuity because if so, once it's once it's down, it should be okay. If I was using that cotton bud and this pad came off, then I'd probably replace it. But if we're still connected, let's double check. Yeah, I mean, there is continuity there. Okay, what I'll do is I'll put a new Nexus connector on and then I'll put some solder mask just over here and just secure this in place. But again, that is making continuity, which shows that it's got good strength and some flux. Tin this area up. Just using leaded solder here. There we go. And again, you can see that that trace isn't breaking away. So I don't think it's as frail as we think it is. And now we drop the, the new connector on and we test that theory. I'm gonna clean up this little blob here. Try and get it in line as best we can because when the solder liquefies, it's just going to take hold. It's actually going to be a little bit easier to put this on when we have hot air applied and the solder's liquefied. So let's do that now. Here we go. There we go. Just like that. Okay, well, the solder has liquefied. There might be one pin there that is struggling. Oh, it might have just popped into place. I will check it in a second and give everything the nudge test just to make sure. Here we are, and they all look absolutely solid, but I'm just going to run over them to double check. Solid, 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 solid. This one is going to move with it. I'm going to put some, uh, like I said, some conformal coating over here, but it's moving with the pad. It's perfect. Solid, solid. Solid, solid. Every single one is solid. That's really good. Just to make them extra secure. This is more from like a why not standpoint, I guess. Just add a little bit of solder to each one. There we go. Again, just doubly making sure that they aren't going anywhere. Quick test before I actually do put UV mask on to secure it. Yeah, all good. So we still have continuity going there. Perfect. Just like that. Okay, mask has been applied. And now if I give it a little bit of a poke, you can see that it's solid. Nice. Okay, should we give it a test? As you can see, I tested all the buttons just to make sure that the full ribbon connector was fine and it seems to be okay. It's gonna be one happy customer. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.